Okay, in chapter 4 we're going to be looking at equations. Um, quadratic equation is anything with a squared variable like this x right here. And in chapter 4 we look at two different types of relationships. One of them is a function where you just are given a formula and it's not equal to anything in specific. Another one is an equation where it is equal to something in specific. It doesn't have to be a zero in this case, it can be any number, but it is equal to something and therefore it is solvable. So we can figure out what x is equal to or what b is equal to. In chapter 4 we're asked to find what's called uh, a root of an equation. And the root of an equation is basically just where the graph of that equation, where the x-intercepts are. These are the x-intercepts where y is equal to zero, what is the value of x? And there's different ways to figure this out. To do this, um, the most basic way is to use, say, something like a graphing calculator, or just to calculate it using formulas from chapter three. So to graph it here, we're going to use the formula p is equal to b over negative 2a, and remember that uh, vertex form is y equals a x squared, or x minus p squared, plus q. So to calculate the p value of our vertex, we go 4 over negative 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 2. So one x value, sorry, just one moment. Um, and then to calculate our q value, we go 3 minus 1 times 2, p value, negative 2 squared. So, and then we have this ends up equaling negative 1, 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 1, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and 2. So, now that we know that our vertex is negative 2 and negative 1, we can find this point, the x value, the y value, and we just find this point, and it's right there, and we know that the slope is 1, so it'll increase, and this will be the next point where the, the graph hits, so the parabola will end up looking somewhat like this. And then these right here are our x-intercepts, or our roots, so we can say that x is equal to negative 3, and x is also equal to negative 1. And that's how you solve by graphing. Another way to solve, this way it's a lot easier if you have limited space, or it's just faster if you don't have a graphing calculator. And this is solving by factoring. So here, here is our standard equation. It's in standard form, and then we factor it out by finding uh, two digits that add to equal 10 and multiply to equal um, 3 times 8, which is 24. And in that case, that's 6 and 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 times 4 is 24, or 3 times 8. And then we factor this out, pull out a greatest common factor here, and this is what we're left with. From here, we can set these brackets to equal to zero, and we find that by calculating in this bracket for it to equal zero, we have x equals negative two. In this bracket, we have x equals negative four over three. And so these are our x-intercepts. If we were to draw a graph, it would look, the x-intercepts would be here and here. Now. From this equation, we don't know the vertex point, but we do know the roots, which in chapter four is all that you're asked to find out. Another way to solve is to complete the square. This way is a little harder, and it's, it'll be important that you remember uh, concepts from chapter three, uh, the concept of completing the square. So here you can see I've completed the square here. We multiply the three, get this out, so on and so forth, and we end up with this in vertex form. But how do we find our x-intercepts from here? Well, we need to solve for this x variable, so we'll go minus 1 over 3 divided by 3, which will give us negative 1 over 9, then we square this to get rid of that, and we subtract 
10 over 6, or we could write it out as 5 over 8. So now we're left with an equation that looks like this. The square root of negative 1 over 9 minus 5 over 8. And here we have this in brackets. But if we were to plug this in, this would only give us one x value, which is a problem because we know from factoring that there's two x values because the graph looks like this and there's two x intercepts. But if we look at um, how we can calculate the square of something, which is, as you can see here, the square root of n can be positive or negative, for example square root of 9 can either be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, or 3 squared is 9, but it can also be negative 3, because a, positive, a negative times a negative is still positive. So we write that out like this, that positive or negative of the square root of negative 1 over 9 minus 5 over 8 equals x. We plug this in, do some math, and we find that x is equal to negative 2, and x is also equal to negative 4 over 3. And those are our roots, and that's how you solve by completing the square. This is the last one. It's also the most convenient one and the most helpful. It's the quadratic formula. It's big, it's grand, it's really scary looking, but it's really not that bad. You simply have combined your standard form variables a, B, C, and you input them into this formula. Now, it is best if you memorize this formula, but it's not a big deal. So, negative 10, you can see I've inputted my A value, my A squared value, my B value, and so on. Now, I'll simplify this, and I end up with X is equal to negative 10 plus or minus the square root over 6. This is okay to write it, um, but to find the specific roots, we might as well plug it in. And after plugging it in, negative 10 plus 2 is 8 over 6, which is also equal to x. Well, it's negative 8 over 6, so it's negative 4 over 3. Or negative 10 minus 2 is 12 over 6 is x equals negative 2. So you can see here that we also have the exact same intercepts, exact same x-intercepts, same graph, because we've had the same formula. No matter how you solve it, you will get the same answer. It'll just depend on what's the fastest way to do it based on the different problems that you're facing. An important thing about standard or the quadratic formula that none of the others have is this piece right here. This is called the discriminant, where b squared minus 4ac is equal to t, the discriminant. Um, and so if you punch this in and you find that d is less than 0 or is a negative number, what happens if you try and find the square root of, let's say, negative 9? It, it doesn't work. This isn't, that can't exist. So, therefore, we can figure out that there will be no x-intercepts. There are no roots. What if we have d is larger than 0? It's a positive number. Well, we can find the square root of 9, and that would mean that it has two roots find two roots because it can be positive or it can be negative, giving us two different numbers. But what if d is equal to exactly zero? Well, if we find the square root of zero, it cannot be positive or negative. It's simply zero. So there's only one root. And that is how we solve for roots of quadratic formulas.